Are you still planting seeds in the dirt like a Neolithic caveman? Today I'm excited to share with you a new method of germinating seeds that allows you to grow multiple plants from one seed. You can actually produce hundreds or even thousands of plants from just one single seed. If you want to recreate this tutorial, I will have everything that I use linked in the description below. Let's begin. Like any other tissue culture procedure, the first step is going to be for us to prepare and sterilize our tissue culture media. To make one liter of TC media for germinating seeds, I start with a container of 800 milliliters of distilled water. To my water, I add 4.54 grams of Murashigi and Scooge basil medium. I add 30 grams of sugar, and I also add seven grams of agar. Once all of the ingredients are added, I top up the container to the one liter mark. With a calibrated pH probe, I adjust the pH to 5.7 using some hydroponic up solution. And after that, the media gets poured individually into polypropylene containers. I'm going to be sterilizing these in a pressure cooker. In past videos, I've recommended a microwave. You might have noticed I don't use a microwave for this process anymore. And that is because it's just not nearly as effective at sterilization when compared to the pressure cooker. These containers are going to get cooked at 15 PSI for 15 minutes. When I use a pressure cooker to sterilize media, I use canning shelves to create multiple layers of containers inside of the pressure cooker so that I can sterilize the maximum amount possible, which in case you're curious, uh, is 24 <laughs> if you're using the exact containers and pressure cooker that I have. We're also going to need a pair of stainless steel forceps later in the video, so just sneak those in with the tissue culture media if you have room to save you time later from having to run the pressure cooker a second time. I'll link these pouches in the description below, but just know you can also use aluminum foil, which is like the street method. Now that we have our media prepared, it is time to choose some seeds to sterilize. I like to collect weird plant things. I have a corpse flower. I recently got some watermelon seeds from the 1870s and also some flower seeds from the 1960s. Unsurprisingly, the old seeds have not germinated. So today we're using some sunflower seeds that were purchased from Amazon. Usually to sterilize things before putting them into tissue culture, I use bleach. But for seeds, there is a much easier way to sterilize them. You can use a much milder ingredient called 3% hydrogen peroxide, which is available literally everywhere. I got mine at Walmart. In a 50 milliliter centrifuge tube, I add five milliliters of 3% hydrogen peroxide. Then I fill up the rest of the container with distilled water. After preparing the solution, just go ahead and add your seeds. Shake the tubes around a few times and then just forget about them for 24 to 48 hours. Don't even look at them. I like to distract myself by purchasing designer isopods on the internet. I recently saw some Instagram stories from Hippio Plants that has reassured me that I am not the only one with the isopod sickness. After 24 to 48 hours, you may notice that the seeds have started to come on, to germinate. If your seeds haven't germinated, that's fine too because they will germinate in tissue culture. Today I'm using a still air box that has been completely sprayed down inside and out with 70% isopropyl alcohol. After cleaning the still air box, it's best to wait 15 to 20 minutes before using it so that the alcohol has enough time to disinfect the surfaces. If you listen very closely, you can hear the bacteria screaming for their lives. Help us! Inside of the still air box, I have my forceps, which I'll leave inside that pouch until I'm ready to use them. I also have a cheap glass bead sterilizer. I run the cord for the glass bead sterilizer through the side of the still air box. I start by opening the forceps and placing them directly into the glass bead sterilizer. I loosen the lid of the first empty media container, but I leave the lids resting on top. You'll see that while I'm working, I leave the lid on top of the seeds as well. When we're working inside the still air box, you don't just want to leave the lids off of things. You can do that if you're in a laminar flow hood, but the still air box is not as good at preventing contamination. It just sort of prevents the air from moving 
as much as it would if you were just doing this anywhere. So we want to move quickly and avoid moving our arms unnecessarily inside of the box. You don't need to submerge the seeds completely in the media. Like I know if you were picturing putting seeds in dirt, you would kind of cover them with dirt. Don't do that. <laughs> they can just get left pretty much on top. I typically leave them sticking like halfway out of the media. I'll include some pictures so you can see. Afterwards, I wrap the containers in plastic wrap to help prevent contamination when we take them out of the still air box. And I place the containers underneath some full spectrum grow lights and we're good to go. One week later, I have one single plant per container, but I don't want one plant. This video is called grow 100 plants from one seed, not grow one plant from one seed. Let me explain how this is going to work. We are going to harvest our baby plant for its organs. Plants have lots of organs. We are going to cut off its leaves. But why? Why do this to our little baby plants? Many plants can be cloned from leaf tissue samples. And since these plants have already been growing in tissue culture for their entire week-long lives, their leaves are already completely sterile and ready to go into multiplication media so that the cells can start cloning themselves. When placed on multiplication media, many types of plants' leaves will produce callus. From the callus, we will then see baby plants emerge, multiple baby plants per container. We are working with sunflowers today, so I researched protocols on ResearchGate by searching the keywords tissue culture in addition to the Latin name for sunflower, which is... Um, anyway, I found this protocol that uses BAP and NAA, which are two different phytohormones to induce callus growth. Depending on what type of plant you are growing from seed, the protocol or the set of instructions for cloning that plant in vitro might differ. So for this part of the video, you might need to do a tiny extra bit of homework to find information about your specific type of plant. In this particular study that I found, scientists were actually trying to induce somaclonal variation or mutations in sunflowers through tissue culture. I'm not trying to mutate my sunflowers, I'm simply trying to clone them. But since the protocol they developed worked to clone sunflowers in vitro, and the scientists were able to use leaves as their explants or tissue samples, I'll be following this specific protocol. I start by prepping some new tissue culture media. The only difference between this media and the media that we prepared earlier is that this media is going to contain some hormones to induce callus growth. I mix 4.54 grams of Murashigi and Scooge, 30 grams of sugar, 7 grams of agar, 2 milligrams per liter of BAP, and 0.1 milligrams per liter of NAA. I adjust the pH again to 5.7 and then I follow the steps outlined before to sterilize the multiplication media inside of the pressure cooker. Now you could attempt the next part of this video inside of a still air box. I am going to be using a flow hood. I think the still air box in my experience, works really well for very simple transfers. So taking something from one container and just putting it into a new container, just that's it. If you are going to be cutting anything apart or separating plants or dividing callus, a still airbox doesn't work as well for those types of transfers. For the flow hood, I have my glass bead sterilizer, forceps, my multiplication media, and my seedlings that we grew earlier in this video. I also have a stainless steel tray and a pair of stainless steel scissors, both of which have been sterilized in an autoclave. You could also use a pressure cooker to sterilize these items at home the same way we sterilized the forceps earlier. I open the container that contains my seedling and I cut off the leaves and gently place them on the tray. Then I'm going to cut the leaves into smaller pieces Generally, when you're using leaves as explants, it's best to at least cut them in half, if not further. This helps with transpiration, which is water loss, and it also helps callus formation because callus will typically occur at the wound site or where you cut the leaf. I hope that makes sense. I place the leaf cuttings onto that multiplication media, and then once I'm done, I wrap each of the containers again with plastic wrap. After a few weeks, we should start to see some callus growth on these samples. 
and from the callus, you will see young baby plants start to form and grow. You can keep subculturing the callus over and over to make more and more plants, and that's how you would potentially end up with 100 or even a thousand plants from one seed. I'm working on a longer duration video right now where I do end up with 100 plants from one seed, but starting seeds in tissue culture is one of the most common questions that I get asked, so I was eager to make the tutorial and give a basic rundown for how it works. I know someone's gonna ask why I started using the still air box if I was gonna end up using a flow hood later in the tutorial anyways. Getting seeds to germinate in TC is one of the easiest TC experiments you can do at home. And even if people aren't going to try to take it further and make 100 plants, I think germinating plants in tissue culture is just a fun thing to do in itself and easy. Thank you everyone so much for watching the video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Nay, a great week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.